So after using this weapon for a while, I think it actually might be slightly better than the M4A1. So throughout the video, we'll go ahead and talk about some of the base stats for this weapon, as well as give you a best class setup. And the gameplay in the background is actually a 70 plus kill game that was actually a late start ground war match. So if you like what I have to say, feel free to hit the like button. And if you're brand new to the channel and you'd like to find your way back because you're not currently subscribed, make sure you hit that red subscribe button, turning it to gray with notifications on so you get a notification every time I post a new video. So how the damage profile works for the PKM is pretty much up to about 37 and a half meters and then obviously further with the range attachment that extend that range, you're gonna get that first set of numbers, which is the limb damage of 32, the torso of 38, and a head damage of 51. And beyond that range, the limb damage will be 27, torso damage will be 32, and the headshot damage will be 43. And since the overall health of the characters is 100, you can see it doesn't make a difference if you land headshots unless you land two headshots within that first range. And when it comes to the second range, even one headshot will reduce the time to kill if you land a couple torso shots and a headshot. So for the most part, this weapon will be three shots to kill. At some of those further ranges, if you end up hitting limb shots, it's going to be four shots. And within that 40-ish meter distance, you can reduce it all the way down to two shots if you manage to land two consecutive headshots. And that information is useful, but without understanding the rate of fire to figure out the time to kill and understanding what the recoil pattern looks like, very hard to decide how good the weapon is. So in terms of recoil, this weapon doesn't really have any side to side recoil. It primarily only has vertical recoil, which is the good kind of recoil. And the reason for that is because you can actually manage vertical recoil versus the side to side. It gets very unpredictable because it's not like you're going to pull left and right on your analog stick or move your mouse back and forth. Whereas with vertical recoil, all you have to do is just pull down and that makes it easy to manage. So now let's go ahead and talk about the rate of fire. And the rate of fire ends up being 756 RPM, which is almost identical to the Kilo one for one. So go ahead and think about this. It actually has better recoil than the Kilo. It has the same fire rate, but it also has the damage profile of the AK-47, which is one of the more powerful weapons in the entire game. So here's just a comparison between some of those different weapons that I just talked about. You can see the times to kill, and then the number in parentheses is if you land those headshots. And as you can see with the PKM, you land back-to-back -back headshots, you end up with a time to kill of 79 milliseconds. And even if you don't, and you just manage to land three shots, the time to kill is as fast as the Kilo if you're landing headshots. And it's pretty competitive with the M4, which actually requires two headshots to get that lower time to kill. And obviously, when you actually use the weapon, you think there's gotta be some kind of catch. It's an LMG, so you gotta be very slow. Obviously, the reload time takes a while, but you get 100 rounds. That gives you plenty of kills to figure out when you wanna reload, or at least when it's gonna be safe to reload. So the overall goal with the attachment should be geared towards trying to get the movement speed a little bit faster in terms of overall movement aim down sight time as well as sprint out time to get the numbers just a little bit closer to the rifle category so you can actually move around the map running gun with it to a certain extent and since that time to kill is so fast it's actually very forgiving to the movement and it is by far one of the easiest weapons to get gold all the challenges are like half of what you need to do for the rifles and since it's a good weapon it makes it really easy to get those challenges done and that's what you're seeing in some of the gameplay right here if it kind of looked like why didn't he aim down sight well as i'm trying to get those hit fire kills if i'm mounting up i'm trying to finish the mounted kills and if i crouch i'm trying to do the crouch kills because i need to knock those out i need about four or five of each of those to finish this match off and then i would be able to get that gold camo which i end up unlocking so i think i covered a majority of the information i think you'll need when creating your own best class setup with all five attachments or whatever the case is but i'll go ahead and show off mine since more often than not people are going to want to know what are you using in the gameplay so my pkm best class setup is going to be the stipple grip tape i'm using a reflex sight because i'm going through my reticle challenges the commando foregrip the 26.9 inch extended barrel as well as the monolithic suppressor and if you want to run an optic that's perfectly fine what i'd highly recommend is to run a weapon perk specifically sleight of hand so i've gone ahead and covered why you clicked on the video i'm going to spend additional time giving you some tips and tricks on how to use this weapon and show you how to play this specific map because more often than not you get a class setup someone shows off a gameplay but you don't really learn anything from it 
and my channel is about helping players improve. So in the gameplay, I'm playing on the newest ground war map and you can see that C's contested. I'm trying to take a different approach. I didn't actually see where the guy was and I ended up getting outgunned in a close quarters engagement, trying to get an easy hip fire kill. And you're gonna see I end up getting a good amount of hip fire kills as I break into one of these houses a little bit later on in the gameplay. And in case you're unfamiliar with how ground war works, there's actually five different objectives, but pretty much you wanna kind of play it similar to the way you do domination where you secure the home spawn flag as well as the middle flag and then you're going to want to go ahead and get the flag in between since there are some extra flags so in this particular case if we're spawning at a then you'd want to go ahead and get a b c if you're on the other side then you get e d c and you can see how this thing lasers and the fact that it has a little bit higher caliber because it's an lmg you are able to wall bang a lot of stuff that you're not traditionally able to do with some of the rifles or the SMGs. So what I'm trying to do is close the distance to try and get in the buildings closer to B so I can at least oversee what enemies are doing and then kind of provide a buffer for enemies trying to get over to C. I go ahead and jump through here and peek it really quick and you can see there's a guy sniping in that doorway. I completely avoid that because almost nine times out of 10, you're gonna lose that gunfight because the aim assist is so strong on console, whereas snipers don't usually get any kind of aim assist, which makes it a little bit more rewarding to actually snipe in the game, but they've made it really simple. So somehow this guy ends up slipping through the cracks. You can see my teammates are just to the left of me. This guy just runs out in the open with two of my teammates to the right of him, and he just completely lasers me. I didn't even know he was there. He was running ghost, so he wasn't appearing on the mini map. There was a UAV in the air. So I wasn't able to get any information from that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and spawn in and then I'm gonna actually start going on a little bit longer streak pretty soon here. And you can see I'm continually moving back to the area I wanna move to, which is this building on the left. There's typically certain power positions on each of the maps. Obviously you can just go ahead and camp in a window and that's gonna be very effective for you because that's the way the maps are designed. They want you to do that. That's why there's so many buildings on the map where you can literally place claymores. I've gone ahead and removed all that nonsense from my class setups. I don't run claymores anymore. I primarily only run thermites, primarily because of the tanks. If you use two of them on a tank and maybe use a launcher, you're gonna go ahead and destroy some of those vehicles on the map, which can be very annoying, especially since they can spawn in every 10 seconds, basically as soon as they're destroyed. You can see on the mini map, there's a ton of enemies behind me. I decided to go ahead and take a different angle, see if I could peek at any of them. I know they're in the house and this is where I get some hip fire kills. Going specifically for the hip fire kills, I go ahead and jump out, try and get the other guy. He sneaks around the corner and luckily I'm still able to catch him because I see the little laser in the bathroom and then I'm able to take him out. So that worked out pretty well. But getting back to the thermites and claymores, the other reason I don't run claymores is because I don't want to put myself in a mindset of where I need to camp. And I would notice that anytime I had claymores as part of my class setup, I would move less often. I would just post up. You can go ahead and put them at a stairway. You know that that is the only entrance you're covered. So pretty much it makes it very simple. You don't even got to think. And as a result of that, you end up getting worse as a player. Right here, I know someone's in my building. I'm kind of just waiting. I know they're coming around the corner. I'm waiting for them. And that's the situational awareness. And with playing some of the more rushing style classes with like the MP5, for example, you notice how bad players are actually getting. And you can see it in pretty much every match you play. There's people posted up with two or three claymores because they're playing in a party. And then they have multiple mines so that you can't get up that stairwell. And what you'll notice is they have no awareness at all. I've hacked a few of those things and then I end up running upstairs and I can actually take out all three of them without any of them actually firing a shot at me. And that's pretty bad. How do you have three people in one room and not one person relays any kind of information? You don't hear any footsteps, gunfire. You didn't see me rolling up as I was shooting my weapon on the mini map. And a lot of that goes back to the design choices by the developers. They specifically wanted the game to cater specifically to noob type players. And it's almost as if they sat around the table and came up with ideas of what noobs do. What are the top 10 things that noobs do in every Call of Duty? Oh, we notice they crouch walk a lot. Oh, they also hold up in a room just camping pre-aim a doorway. Yep, okay, let's help them out with that. Let's add it mounting into the game which reduces the recoil because they're not good at shooting their weapon. We also notice that they never sprint. So what we're gonna do is punish players who do sprint so they'll actually have an advantage. And on top of that, what happens is early on in the game's life cycle, we didn't have a mini map. Guess who doesn't use the mini map? Noobs who don't know how to play the game. They don't know the benefits of using the mini map, how overpowered the fully functional mini map actually is so they don't use it. Guess what? Let's go ahead and get rid of it. It's gonna help those type of players. Oh, you know what? They also miss a lot of shots. Let's lower the time to kill. Let's make people die very fast. So if they land a couple quick shots, they're gonna insta-melt people. 
we're still gonna include flinch and a high headshot multiplier. So even if they fire second, they're still gonna win the gunfight. Imagine that, all those things are design choices that are specifically catered towards new, novice, or low-skilled players. So that's what you need to do when you're playing Modern Warfare. You need to actually forget everything you've learned from playing Call of Duty and just oversimplify it. Go back to the basics and think, what would a new player, a novice, a noob do when they're playing Call of Duty? They're gonna crouch walk. They're never gonna sprint. They're gonna pre-aim doorways. They're gonna camp with a claymore. They're gonna pre-aim in a window. They're pretty much gonna do all those things on a regular basis because that's what they've always done. So it kinda sucks that I started this match late because I would've had more than 71 kills, probably been closer to 85, 90, but now we'll never know. I know I kinda went on a tangent, but I feel comfortable doing that on my channel. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, please remember to hit the like button and if you're brand new around here and made it to this point of the video, just go ahead and subscribe with notifications on. Do appreciate all the support. 